Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study, and I want to thank you for tuning in to a little blind money saving video. So, in a prior video, and you can click the link right up above for this video, I told you about bread and butter spots and how they are the most profitable spots to put yourself in and how to get in that situation a little bit more often. Just to reiterate, bread and butter means you're in position on the flop as the pre flop raiser against one other player. Now, this is the most profitable spot to be in because you have positional advantage. You have a range advantage because you have aces, kings, queens in your range. They just called. They likely don't. And often because your uh, most bread and butter spots are you in a later position versus one of the blinds, the players that defend their blinds a little too frequently are often some of the weakest players at the table. So you have that skill advantage as well. So bread and butter, most profitable spot to be in. Let's look at the other side of the bread and butter coin, the non bread and butter player. Well, this is the player who called out of the blinds after you open raised. They're at a positional disadvantage, a range disadvantage because they just called and potentially skill disadvantage. We're not really sure on that. Depends on who the players are, right? Well, a lot of my students and a lot of the weakest players that I target when I'm playing poker, they're the kinds of players who don't mind getting in non-bread and butter spots. They don't mind calling out of the blinds with jack six suited and ace six off suit and queen nine suited. They don't mind that they're way behind your open raising range. Now, on the screen, Poker Tracker 4, you can see this is my own database for this year. I filtered for call preflop two bet in the blinds. Let me show you what that looks like. Call the two bet posted either blind. Now, I recommend if you're watching this video at home, open up Poker Tracker 4, run this filter for yourself right now to see what your profitability is. Now, for me this year, hey, out of the big blind, lovely. I'm positive 45 big blinds per 100 hands. That means when I'm calling, on average, I'm earning 0.45 big blinds when I call. Do you know what my win rate would be if I folded every big blind versus a raise? Yep, negative 100. So I'm at positive 45. If I folded all these hands, I'd be at negative 100. I'm making some pretty good calling decisions. But eek, out of the small blind right here. This year, it's only 95 hands, but things aren't going well. I'm at negative 107. If I folded every small blind, what would my win rate be? Yep, negative 50. I'm at negative 107. I would have been better off, even when I called and won with ace king, ace queen right here, I would have been better off folding all of these small blind hands. I'd be at negative 50 or roughly $5 down instead of uh, 850 down, right? So I do obviously have a little bit of work I can do, especially in the small blind when it comes to calling two bets. Now, so these are my rates right here. I took a look at a few other players. This is one of my students. When I first met with student number one, negative 35 out of the small blind when calling two bets, negative 122. After a few months of work and a few different sessions with this student focusing on making better preflop calls, positive 58, positive 3.4 out of the big blind. Way better than folding every blind hand, right? This student, negative 84, is now a positive 13. Negative 125, now positive eight. And I pulled up a couple of, or a few different fish in my database. Um, negative 65, negative 214, negative 357, negative 122. Both of these players would have been so much better off folding every single blind and never making a call. Fish number three right here, this is interesting, negative 507 win rate out of the small blind. That means every time he calls in the small blind, he loses 5.07 big blinds on average. He could just fold all those hands and lose 0.5 big blinds on average, right? Kind of interesting though, he's profitable uh, in the big blind. Now it could be a sample size thing, maybe he, he hit like an inordinate number of sets in the big blind, whatever the case might be, but super big losing, nicely positive right here. But what I want to do from this point forward, now that you've filtered for your own or within your own database for your win rates out of the blinds when calling, you might have noticed that you need some work, whether it's a small blind, big blind, maybe both of them. I want to give you some strategies right now for making better calls out of the blinds. So the first thing, strategies to avoid non-bread and butter spots. You have to realize that calling out of the blinds, especially versus one razor, it's non-bread and butter. You're handing your opponents theoretical value. Your call allows them to be in the most profitable flop situation. Do you really want to do that? 
What I want you to do first is have the attitude of, I hate giving them bread and butter. Before you click call out of the blinds, think to yourself, I hate giving them bread and butter. If you don't want to give this player a bread and butter spot right now, you know that they're aggressive, you know that they're a winning player, you know that they know what they're doing, and you're giving them the best situation to be in, yeah, it's a money losing spot for you. You should probably fold instead quite often. Now, if you do think that you want to play the hand, the first thing you're, want to get, you're going to want to do is put them on a range. And let's whip out a Flopzilla for this. So your opponent open raises on the button, small blind folds, you're thinking about calling. Let's say they have a 30% open raising range right here. What you want to do, if you're going to decide, or if you're going to choose to call, your hand should be at the top of their range. Too many players call with hands because I'm suited, because I'm connected, because I might flop something really big. You don't want to do that, right? You're giving them positional advantage and a range advantage by calling. Let's minimize that range advantage as much as possible. Let's say you often call with hands like queen nine suited. Well, queen nine, as you can see, it's towards the bottom of their range. Most of their hands, all the aces, the kings, all the pocket pairs are ahead of your queen nine suited right here. Your queen nine has only 42% equity. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not great either, right? What about another common calling hand of 6-5 suited? Well outside of their range, well below it, oh, 38% once again. You could hit something super lucky on the flop to gain value, but most likely they have position. You're going to be check folding on most flops right here with a 6-5 suited. But what if you're calling with hands toward the top of their range? What if you call with those pocket tens? Well, Pocket 10s have lovely 66% equity. You're ahead of all their other pocket pairs, all of their non-paired hands, and things are looking pretty good with pocket 10s. Now, just because pocket 10s is a good call, I'm not saying don't three bet with it, but if you do choose to call, I wouldn't fault you because you're at the top of their range and you have that pre-flop equity advantage right here. What about a different hand like ace jack or ace queen suited? Ace jack suited, 60%. Oh, let's look at the offsuit. Ace Jack offsuit, 58%. You can see where this is. This is towards the top of their range too. They have plenty of suited aces and offsuit aces that you're ahead of, and you're ahead of all their other Broadway stuff. And all their pocket pairs, tens and below. Well, if you hit your ace, you hit your jack, you're now ahead of them, right? Plus, you've got that ace power. You can maybe use that for some aggression post-flop, especially with a hand like ace jack suited. You could flop a really good straight draw, a really good flush draw, and then start to put pressure back on your opponent. Get them to fold. When you make calls pre-flop, you're not just relying on hitting big hands. Hitting big hands is great, and that's why you want ace-jack suited versus ace-jack offsuit, ace-king suited versus ace-jack suited, right? The stronger the hand, the more likely you can make a strong hand yourself. But when you hold a pretty strong hand yourself, depending on that board, when that comes out, well, you potentially, if you have ace-king suited or ace-jack suited, you have a flush draw, you have a couple over cards, you can call depending on the situation, you can possibly put pressure back on them because you have a strong hand with plenty of outs for a good top pair hand, right? So there's lots of options with the stronger hands. With weaker hands, you're often just relying on just your bluffing power. So when you call, make sure it's at the top of their range. Uh, and then also think about the situation, right? When you're calling this player's open raise with, let's just say 10-9 suited, for example, before you call, you need to be happy seeing the flop with this hand against this player and out of position. If anything right there sounds ugly, sounds difficult, you don't want to play this player out of position, just fold. Sure, it's a teen, it's a 10-9 suited. You have equity versus their range. But why put yourself in a potential losing situation, especially a losing one that looks bad to you? What if you're up against an aggressive player? Maybe they don't even have this wide of a range. Maybe they're on a more narrow range. And you know that they love to see bet flops and double barrel, potentially triple barrel. They're a really aggressive post flop player. How likely is your 10 9 suited going to get to showdown with the best hand? Not too likely at all, right? You need to hit two pair or better. If you hit just a top pair with a 10 or a 9, well, you're basically just going to be check calling the whole way because your opponent has all these stronger hands. They can easily triple barrel on a 9 high board with pocket aces, kings, and queens, and you're just check calling because you hit that top pair, but you don't want to fold. His range advantage, especially if he holds one of those top level hands, is going to crush you and earn tons of value out of you right here. But if you're happy 
seeing the flop with this hand against this player from out of position, go ahead, make the call. Now, the last thing, a really good idea that I tell my students, you can often fold now and save that hand for a later position open. Now I have two hands to show you right here. So queen nine suited in the small blind, right? Villain two makes it three big blinds, a fold and a call. Now, are you really happy calling right now, going out of position to the flop against, if he calls potentially three other players, loose aggressive, loose aggressive, C bets the flop a lot, not so much on the turn, but this player loves to double barrel. It's not a great winning spot. You're hoping to hit something good in order to, to, uh, to remain in the pot, to win the hand. You might be able to push them off if you flop some kind of a draw or just use outright aggression against them. But against two players in a multi-way pot, you probably don't want to play that queen nine suited. You're probably better off folding. But what you can do, if you have a piece of paper in front of you, write down queen nine suited 2.4 big blinds because that's how much you called. And the next time, so here's the whole idea about what I'm about to say. Use your chips in the most advantageous situation. Let's say you are going shopping and you're going to two different stores. The first store has something that you want and they charge $20 for it. But you know that this store is more expensive than the second store. The second store that you're about to go to, it's actually on your way home. You're going there no matter what. And you think if they have the same product, they might be selling it for $18, $17, a little bit of a savings. You're already going there. You want that item. You have the money. But if you can spend less on it, great, you're saving some money. Same thing right here. You have the queen nine suited. You want to play it. You're willing to put in 2.4 big blinds, but why don't you just fold this one instead and wait for a better position to be putting that money in? Here's another one, queen nine suited, and you're in a later position now. It's folded around to you. Hey, you can use those chips that you didn't call. You kept that money in your pocket. You didn't call with them pre-flop and use them now to open raise. Awesome, look, look what can happen now. Instead of using that 2.4 big blinds, you're spending a little bit more, three big blinds. But what happens? You get the weakest player at the table in the big blind to call you, 55-6. Look at tight aggressive, tight aggressive, tight aggressive, tight aggressive, kind of loose aggressive players, semi-loose aggressive as well. You've avoided or you've uh, used a little bit, little bit of discernment, avoided that marginal or maybe money losing situation. And a couple hands later, with the exact same hand, you use those chips in a more advantageous situation. Instead of calling, putting yourself out of position against two loose aggressive players, you decided to raise and put yourself in position against the weakest player at the table. Such a better use of your chips. So what I'd really like to see you do, run that filter, like I said, see what your profitability is. And over the next two weeks, really focus on making tighter small blind and big blind calls. The goal is to turn. If you're like one of these players with a lot of negative stuff, you want them less negative, right? You want to increase those win rates, but potentially turn them positive. The whole idea of be kind calling is because you see a money making situation, even as the pre-flop caller. If you're calling and losing money, you're making mistakes in the long run. Making good calls means that you will be profitable in the long run, and we should see all black win rates, all winning win rates eventually, once you improve these skills. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and learned a little something, give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel as well, and I'll catch you in the next one.